Good evening, my friends. Thank you for coming tonight. Um, today we're going to talk about different ways of layering clothes and packing in a way that makes sense. You can have not just a white bag, but you can also have a stylish bag, which I think is a nice combination of things. Today I'm here in uh, Seattle at Eileen Fisher, which is brand of clothing I've been traveling with for many years, but I never ever thought to actually contact them and tell them that, that I've been traveling with their clothes forever. Uh, so I want to show you a few things that I have been traveling with and the way I put it back together. A lot of people out there, uh, you know that I love to weigh my clothes. That's the number one thing I like to do to make sure I can put as many things in the bag as possible. Uh, and a lot of the things here in this store are silk, cashmere, linen, tinsel, things that are very lightweight and natural fibers that are breathable, comfortable. And they are a little more high-end, but the way I look at it is when you pay more, you get more. You get what you pay for. So if you want clothes that will last you for a long time for travel, this is a really good way to do it. So, first thing I want to show you is this is a bag that recently came home. And just a quick look at what goes in a bag for me. I actually pulled this directly out of my, my bag from two months. This is two months worth of clothing, right here. It's amazing. I traveled from June 21st to August 21st, which is yesterday, with this sack of clothing. And what it is, is in the top, we have tops that are all ruled sort of like sausages. This, for example, is an Ivy Fisher top. It's just a silk kind of simple top like this. Uh, and everything else in there, I have a cashmere sweater, rolled the same way. But everything rolled like little sausages, so that when you are ready to pull them out, they don't have wrinkles in them. So it's a really easy way. And also, as I am looking at my clothes in the morning, I get up and I'm tired after having several bottles of wine the night before champagne and Paris, for example. I look and go, oh look, okay, what's, okay, I have cream, I have black, what do I want to wear today? You can instantly see everything that you want because you roll them all up and you can quickly flip through without disturbing too much. And then you can just put the little lid over the top again, zip it shut, and it's all securely in there to go back into your bag. So that's a really um, great way to do your tops. On the bottom side of this cube, I have my bottoms and my dresses. And they are just simply folded, so anything that needs to be folded goes in the bottom section. So I just have like these white pants, which I know seems like a really terrible fashion choice. But let's see, two months worth of wear, and they look pretty clean still, actually. I washed them a couple times, and they made it just fine. So uh, pulling things nice and neatly, when I pull them out of my bag, they end up being more or less uh, not so wrinkly. I've got some dresses in here uh, and tops that have been folded. So, this little package here has a total of five pairs of pants, three dresses, four dresses, uh, about 12 tops, uh, and it's all the clothes that I needed for two months. So it works out really well. But, oh, I have a skirt in here too. So really easy to just kind of pack things nice and compactly. So anytime anybody says that they can't pack light, I don't believe them because it's not what you're doing is you can take as many clothes as you want. The problem is that people bring things that are heavy. So as an example, just a dress I have in my bag, I made this, so this is not a fair comparison, but this little dress that I made out of silk weighs less than a t-shirt. So something just simple like this, it weighs almost nothing. Um, of course, that means that I made it, but you can buy things like this too. And uh, Eileen Fisher sells dresses like this that are made of silk and they last for a really long time. So it's a good investment to buy yourself lightweight things uh, that you can travel with. For example, this top that I'm wearing here, this weighs probably, I don't know, an ounce or two, maybe two ounces maximum, which is like a scarf, basically. And how comfortable and cute is that? So that's the idea of the deal, is you weigh everything and you choose your clothes based on weight. So there's all my clothes. I've got here, uh, a cube for my shoes, so I've got a couple pairs of shoes in here. Uh, and then I've got also in here a cube that's got all of my underwear in here. And just a real quick tour of the underpants just have to show you. When you get your underpants, look for the ones that are travel friendly. And the travel friendly ones are the ones that are made of mesh, like this. Okay? You can get these from a variety of companies, but the mesh underpants is that I have in this case three bras 
and eight pairs of underpants, my pajamas, and a scarf and my baby suit. Oh, and this. Oh, that's impressive. <laughs> I really do. See? Look. There's my sports bra. It's in her underwear and wants to get away. Uh, scarf. Yeah, my pajamas are just it's little silk pajamas. So using silk and mesh and really lightweight materials, you can get everything you need into this tiny little space. So this is everything like that, all the underpants and scarves and pajamas, just in this little tiny piece. So pretty simple. And then the thing that weighs the most, toiletries. So I get a toiletries kit that can also double as your carry-on liquid approved uh, toiletries kit, but I hack it a little bit because I try to consolidate. So a couple of things I found recently that are really great tips. Number one, I bought this. This is deodorant. It's paste deodorant, and it lasts for two days. I bought that in London, actually, that you can order here in the U.S. This is toothpaste. This is powder toothpaste. It's empty now, but it was powder toothpaste, and it weighs nothing. It's lightweight, and you can pack it. So all of your toiletries can just be little tiny things like this. And then you end up having plenty of room for other things, you know, contact lenses, combs. Uh, another little tip, look for a comb or brush that folds like this, because it takes up less space. So if you think about all the ways in which you can economize on space and weight, you're going to end up having a bag that weighs virtually nothing. Uh, so this is more stuff than I probably even need. Suntan lotion, I brought a suntan lotion stick in here. Rather than a big tube, I just have it in this little tube like this. So if you think about it, you can really put together a very small toiletries kit. I could have a bag less than half this size, and it would still fit everything in. Uh, and the last little tip I want to give you is for base makeup, I use Mirror Minerals, because this is a really good base makeup, but it also it has an SPF so, yeah, it, so you can use it as suntan like, sunblock as well. Uh, so, that was just a quick little spin through my toiletries kit. And then, the last thing I have in here, I think it's important to kind of accessorize. So I have a little pouch with all of my jewelry. Uh, and what I try to do when I pick up jewelry is I try to bring interesting jewelry that has a story. So each of my necklaces has a different story from my travels. And I do this just for fun. Um, interesting pieces. This is just uh, some pretty pearls I bought in Florence. Cheap, not expensive. But they're interesting enough that people ask me about them. And so what I'd love to do is have uh, different necklaces. I can say, oh, I got this in Florence on this day. This I bought in Marrakesh from uh, the Casbah in Marrakesh, or the marketplace. And so each of these necklaces has a little story. There's one I bought in Catania in Sicily on a a day that was kind of special. So something fun to think about when you travel instead of buying big things that are going to take up a lot of space in your bag, buy fun little pieces of jewelry, necklaces and earrings uh, that then you can tell a story about the next time you travel. So that's my strategy. And then I also keep in here my little medal, uh, St. Jude, which is the patron saint of hopeless causes because, you know, so, uh, this is my little package of uh, jewelry, and I do encourage you to always bring interesting jewelry. I currently have short hair, so earrings are a lot of fun. Uh, and what you can do with jewelry is you can really dress up a simple outfit and make it something uh, kind of fun by using interesting accessories, and it doesn't take a lot of weight. Uh, last little thing I wanted to point out in my bag to consider is compression socks. Compression socks are really important. Uh, because they really help with your keeping your legs. Uh, yeah, you can do that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so compression socks you can get very inexpensively, and they're, they make your legs more comfortable. Uh, so what I want to show you now is sort of the heart of what I'm here at Eileen Fisher to do, and that is to help you figure out what clothes to pack. Now, everybody has a different style. Everybody wears different clothes. I can't tell you what your style should be, but I can tell you that what's really amazing is that the clothes here all match. And I picked out clothes that all match. So I'm going to just help you think about when you're selecting clothing, how you select things. So the first thing I did is I, uh, we have a little rack here of all these different things that I pulled off the shelves. My number one thing when I pick up clothes is what does it weigh? This, for example, weighs, like I said, nothing. This is about one and a half ounces. These silk pants, which I took with me everywhere for two months, these weigh uh, three and a half ounces. So that's less than a pair of t-shirt, or less than a t-shirt. They're silk, 
And so they were surprisingly cool in 95 degree weather in Florence, but they were perfectly comfortable on a freezing airplane ride home. I don't know how magical these pants are or how they do it, but they are warm in a cold situation and cool in a hot situation. So I highly recommend these. These are part of the system line of clothing. Again, not inexpensive, but you get what you pay for, and these really are great. They weigh nothing and take no space. So if you look at the color scheme that I've chosen here, I'm going with white, I'm going with black, and then I'm choosing two other colors. So if you just if you can't think of any other, other choices, think white, black, and a couple other colors just to kind of make it pop. So uh, I'm starting off with the black pants. Underneath is a white t-shirt, uh, a tank top, and then things to layer. And the really important key for those of you that are going to be traveling in the fall, which I know everybody's thinking about September travel, what's the weather going to be like where you go? Well, it can be anything, can't it? I mean, with the, the temperatures these days, nobody knows. So what I suggest is you bring lightweight pieces you can layer in multiple ways. And so that's why I got on a tank top underneath this. So if I'm really hot, I take this layer off. Oh, but if it's chilly, I've got some really fun layers uh, that I can put over the top. This is gorgeous. This is a cashmere kind of coat being put over the top that suddenly is very, very cozy and has a really different look. And then I have a pretty scarf that kind of goes with everything. And suddenly I went from being nice and cool to being ready for weather that's freezing. I could go outside if it was 30 degrees out and I'm going to be, oh, so cozy. I don't want to ever take this sweat off. <laughs> so uh, people at home know that I have an obsession with cashmere and there's a reason. It's because cashmere is durable and warm and super light and very soft. So if you're going to splurge in one aspect of your bag, I highly recommend it being cashmere. And there's a whole bunch of really beautiful new things they have here uh, made out of cashmere. So this is really a good way to spend your money if you're going to invest in something uh, nice for your travel bag. Uh, so that's one way you can layer. Another fun piece of layer is a vest. And vests, I, don't, I know don't suit everybody. I've never thought a vest suits me. But this one is like a sleeping bag. It's so cozy. It's so nice. And all of a sudden, I went from being just sort of mm, not quite warm enough to being perfectly warm and cozy. And I'm thinking a piece like this would be really versatile for fall travel, but also for the airplane. Because if you're on an airplane, which I just got off of, this has cozy pockets, a little hood, so you can put in your little pod. It's like an airplane pod. So I think this something like this would be really very, very cozy for a trip when you're in shoulder season, sort of September, October into November. This would be a really nice piece for that. So just continually thinking about layering, how you put together different colors, different styles. Um, I love picking out a scarf to start with. So this scarf has nice colors in it. It's got the kind of turquoise and it's got the, the ochre color. And from there you can build. Uh, sometimes I'll start with a scarf. I'll just grab out of my bag my favorite scarf and lay it on the bed and then I'll just lay all of my clothes up against it to make sure that they go with everything. And if I take this scarf and I lay it over the top, pretty much it goes with everything. It matches all the different tones that I've chosen and all the different things that, uh, that I've put together. It goes fine with black and white, but it goes really well with different shades of this sort of turquoise color. Uh, so that's your best way to make sure that everything is going to work. Um, so the different facets are you want to have multiple weights, you want to have multiple types of warmth, and you want to have things you can layer and piece together uh, in different ways. Um, so just a few other thoughts about how you can put things together. I'll do a little change of room for you guys. I know you guys love that, so just a few other ways to put something together. Um, let's say it's going to be kind of warmish, kind of coolish, not entirely sure. And I'm going to have a day where I'm going to an art museum. Uh, I don't want to look too sloppy. So nice black pants. Those are nice. Let's see, I'm in Paris, going to a museum. Uh, and I have a top like this. Just something really simple. And it's very chic. And it, it looks good on. And it you know, could be dressed up or dressed down. If I want to go into my little kit of jewelry, I could pull out a pretty necklace uh, or something. Or I can just grab a pretty scarf scarf on and there we go I look very sophisticated you know so that's a really easy way to do that and then if it gets cool I can layer it even more I can take one of these pretty sweaters that I grabbed so 
something like this. I have a little pop of Kelly that goes over the top of it. Something like that. And then you go back to grab the sweater again. And there you go. You've got a nice looking outfit. So um, you could even, if you were wanting to do a belt, I don't like belts because I don't feel crap. I have a very high waist, but if you liked a belt look, you could even use your scarf to kind of tie it as a belt as well. Um, one other thing you could do with scarves that, that I think is really interesting is that uh, sometimes you go into churches and, oh yeah, I forgot I'm going to a church today. Whoops, I can't go in there with my shoulders like this, so you can make yourself a little shoulder wrap and you can make it look a little bit more purposeful by kind of tying it or pinning it so it kind of goes over your shoulder like this. And now it really looks like you meant to look this way. So that's one way to do it. Or if you had knees that are bare, that could be a problem if you go into a church. You can use a scarf like this, make sure it's long enough, but you can make a little around the waist wrap like this. And suddenly you have solved your problem with getting into the Vatican, for example. I was trying to go into the Vatican about three weeks ago and didn't think about this. And so I went through my bag and I pulled out two scarves and I put one around my waist and I put one over my shoulders and no problem at all. So it's nice to have sort of different layers, different uh, sleeve lengths, uh, and different ways that you can put things together. In the winter time and in the fall, I think it's really nice to bring at least one pullover sweater. Uh, and you can even, over a top like this, put a pullover sweater. So now I've got on silk pants, a silk tank top, a top sleeveless top, and then this over the top of this, which is cashmere and is super cute. And now I've got a completely different look. Yeah. So I think I think this is the point that you can keep building. Just how do you keep building using different pieces to turn one outfit into a bunch of different outfits? Um, another thing I really suggest when you're picking things out is button-up shirts. Button-up shirts are really useful. Uh, because they can be either uh, buttoned up or they can be used as a jacket. Uh, so one of the fabrics I really suggest when you're looking at clothes is cotton lawn or cotton poplin. And I'll show you the cotton poplin right now. This is just a beautiful top right here that I have just unbuttoned and I'm using it like a jacket, which is super cute. Just simple like this I think is kind of cool and artsy. This looks like something I'd wear to an art museum and with my funky do hairstyle now, it kind of works. Um, you can button it up though if you want to be a little more formal. And a lot of people might say to me, well why would I bring white? That's a terrible idea. White is a great idea because white is surprisingly easy to get along with. You might think that you travel it's a terrible idea, but a few tips. First of all, salt. If you get something onto a white outfit, immediately grab salt and rub salt into it because salt will take out just about any stain you can think of. Uh, well, underarm stains, if you sweat a lot, you can get them out with a salt paste. Um, so as long as you have something in your bag, a little bit of salt, or if um, you can bring a little vial of sprayed vinegar, that's another really good tip. Just get a little squirt bottle and put white vinegar in and keep it in your purse. So if you happen to dump something on this, you know, of course, I'm going to dump spaghetti on this if I wear this out to dinner. But if I do, start by getting it wet and wiping it off and then spray white vinegar on it and it will disappear. So white is actually a much more friendly than maybe you think it is. And how easy, it looks good with everything and it's so bright and fresh. Uh, so I, I dare you, I dare you to take the white because also then, <laughs> The white does continually look wonderful in different shades too. I love this. You do kind of a bright white and then a cream over the top. I don't know, I'm getting adventurous in my old age because I would have never done this 10 years ago, but how nice the shades of white that are different shades look so, they look so, so chic, I, I think, from my perspective. So I have three different shades of white, you know. This is a little different than this, which is a little different than this, and I think all together, so that's one look there. Um, rounding out the little lineup that I have pulled together are a couple of dresses that I wanted to point out. Uh, a lot of women say that they would never wear a dress traveling. And I think that's a shame because dresses can be so incredibly versatile. You can wear dresses uh, 
not just as a dress, but you can wear them as a top as well. Uh, so you can kind of think about dresses in, in a few different ways. One of my colleagues actually wears only dresses and leggings and cardigans. That's all she wears. And she always looks darling. Uh, so it's a way to dress it up. And if you're traveling in Europe particularly, dresses can come in really handy because you'll always look chic. Uh, so this is just an example of a really cute dress I found here that I think is so nice. It's a really light uh, cotton top one again. It weighs nothing. I would guess this weighs about three and a half ounces, four ounces, uh, which is again about the weight of a t-shirt. It folds down to nothing. And this can be dressed up and even just put, I have pants on, but that's okay. You can wear a dress with pants. It can kind of look fun if you put a dress over the top and you turn it into kind of more of a tunic. So something like this, which I think is really darling. So simple little dress with cute little pockets. And then you can layer it again. This is a wonderful, super duper lightweight little jacket. Silken cashmere, weighs nothing, and it's so soft. And there you go. So easy peasy, looks cute, and it all goes together. So that's super simple. So dresses can be worn in different ways. Now, if it gets hot, I can just go into the bathroom of the museum and take the pants off, and then I'm good to go, you know? <laughs> And that's fine, I've done that before, where I put uh, leggings or pants under a dress and then I take them off midday, and then I just keep going. So this dress in particular, I just love. This is the second time I've seen it, and it's really ideal because it's super lightweight but not see-through uh, at all. Uh, one other dress that I pulled off the rack that I really like is just a simple black pencil dress. And you can do a million things with this. You can put sweaters over it, uh, you can put uh, pants underneath it, you can wrap a scarf around it for a belt. There's a million ways you can deal with a dress like this. My only hesitation with this is the jersey does weigh a bit. So you're going to have to sacrifice some weight for a uh, dress like this. But uh, you could do with it. Uh, and then the one question everybody asks me, what about jeans? Now jeans are maybe not the best travel companion because they're heavy, but you love your jeans. Everybody loves their jeans. So, my suggestion is, if you love your jeans, wear your jeans. But that just means you have to be thoughtful about what other pants you bring. So these lightweight silk pants I have on are a good combination with jeans. But, this is the crazy idea, bring a scale with you. Because if you're shopping for jeans, and you put these onto a scale, you're going to find that this pair of jeans weighs about, I did this last time I was here, it weighs about six ounces less than a typical. Jeans. Uh, so not all pairs of jeans are created equally. You need to pick them up, see how thick the fabric is, see how heavy the fabric is, and then just do a really simple folding test. I like to fold things in thirds and see how flat it is. Once that's folded, that doesn't look like a whole lot. And so that's really a good way to test. Is this going to work or not? How bulky is it? How heavy is it? These actually weigh nothing, and what I love about these particular jeans, I mean Fisher ones, is look at that, very strange. <laughs> so if you're eating your pasta dinner, it doesn't really matter because, you know, you got lots of stretch available. Um, so think about jeans, but I would say a lot of people don't want to bring the jeans. Bring them if you love them, if they're pants that make you feel happy and good about yourself. It's entirely worth it if that's the case. Uh, so it's really important to be thoughtful and wear what makes you feel comfortable. Um, one of the reasons I'm here at Eileen Fisher, and I really like the clothes here, is that I think the clothes here make every woman look good. I think they fit every woman in a really flattering way because they're not bulky, but they're cut in a way that is flattering to every woman's figure. So when you look for clothes and you go out shopping, look and see what drapes well on your body, what makes you feel confident, and don't try to dress differently. Don't try to dress like you're going on a safari, because you're not, unless you're going on a safari, which you're probably not going on a safari. Uh, too many people go to Europe wearing the pants with all the pockets and the vest and the hat and the whole thing. You wouldn't dress that way at home. Why would you dress that way going to Paris? It's kind of a ridiculous idea. So wear the things that you would feel nice wearing at home. And what I think is a great idea when you're traveling in Europe in particular is to wear clothes that are a little bit fancier, maybe than what you would wear at home. These are not fancy things, they're just nice. And it's good to pack in a way that makes you feel nice because then when you're traveling throughout Europe or wherever you're going, you feel confident. Um, all of these clothes here, this would be 
idea or wardrobe that I would suggest for a month. No problem at all. Because if we count how many outfits we have, let's just kind of do a quick count. We've got the jeans. The jeans are going to go with how many tops? One, two, three, uh, four, four tops I have this underneath, plus the dress, so five things. Uh, the, these black pants, we're going to do that again, five, so that's ten outfits. Two dresses that can stand alone, so there's two outfits, plus you can layer those with about three or four different things, so you can add about six or seven different combinations with each dress. So in total, if I took just these things on this rack, I would have enough completely different combinations that I would look different every day for at least a month. And that's pretty easy considering how few things there are here. So that's what you need to do, think about layering, think about weight, think about how many combinations you can make, and just be really sparing about colors. So I love when you think about the basic colors, grays, creams, blacks, whites, and then choose a color that you really enjoy. So like the ochre and the green. And the one thing I, that I love about this color combination is that they're diametrically opposed. And I was an architect in the past, so I remember the color wheels that we used to look at to choose building colors. You always want to choose things that are opposed because they, they combine in a way that's complementary. So these two things are opposed colors, but they actually combine really harmoniously. So that would be my advice. Choose black, choose white, and different shades of white. And then choose two colors that complement. It doesn't have to be these two, but maybe let's say it's sort of a, uh, a blue, like a light blue, and a sort of apricot color. That would be another direction to go. So how do you, how do you put those together? So two uh, different colors and a scarf that ties all of those things together. That looks good. with every single one of your combinations. That's what I would suggest. Okay, so for clothes, that's my suggestion. My last topic I wanted to tell you about is shoes, because that's the thing everybody wants to know about. Shoes are very, very, very difficult. Uh, they do have some lovely shoes here that I just wanted to point out. I wanted to grab a couple pairs. I think shoes like these are perfect for traveling, especially traveling in Europe. They're just slip-ons that look really pretty, like little ballerina slippers. But the underside, these are like tennis shoes. They're not terribly heavy, and they're comfy. So these would be beautiful for traveling. Uh, I have a pair on right now that I think are great. They're by Pro Cut. And they're little slip-ons, and they weigh uh, three ounces per shoe. And they're just kind of cute. I think they're fun, and they're black and white. And look, they go with everything here. See, so it's a whole method of thinking, how do you get something that goes with everything that you're, you're wearing. Uh, you could go a different route, and I spotted these. Wouldn't these be fun? Are they practical? No. Does that matter? No. <laughs> do they go with everything on this rack? Kind of. <laughs> but you know, the funny thing is, I took a wild pair of shoes with me to Italy this year that I bought in Morocco, these yellow shoes that were insane and didn't go with anything, but everybody loved them and they looked great. So I really do suggest have fun with your wardrobe because then you have a sense of delight. And if you have a sense of delight in what you're wearing, you're gonna have a sense of confidence walking down the streets of whatever city you're in. Uh, so these darling shoes would look absolutely adorable with all of these things actually. Uh, so I highly recommend choosing okay, your practical black shoes, but then bring a pair of fun shoes that are really good fun, especially in the fall. You're probably not bringing sandals, maybe you will, but I recommend at least two pairs of shoes. So maybe consider bringing a pair, simple pair of black shoes, and then something a little bit more uh, sparkly and fun and different. This is the other pair of shoes that I wish my feet were small enough for. These are very cute. Um, the only thing you have to think about with shoes like this is roughing up the bottom somehow because so they're a little slick. But something like this would be so versatile and obviously goes with absolutely everything that I picked up. So any of these combinations would be great. And I can guarantee you that if you packed all of this stuff up, your bag would be smaller than this bag that I put together. And the goal is always to be under 16 pounds because that is the I know, I know 16 pounds, that's not possible. Yes it is. It is possible. This bag was, uh, I weighed it and it was 15 pounds with all those things in it for two months. So it is absolutely possible. You can do it if I can do it. And you can also look cute because, you know, you pick the right clothes, that's the way you end up looking cute as well as packing the super.
There you go. Yes. What do you use to lay clothes when you're shopping? What do I use? I bring my kitchen scale. I actually put my kitchen scale into my purse. I have just one of the little digital kitchen scales. And I know I'm that crazy person. My children are terribly embarrassed when they're shopping because I show up at Nordstrom with my kitchen scale. <laughs> and I literally do that because if I have three pairs of jeans that I've tried on and I don't know which one to buy, I weigh them. Or to be less embarrassing to my family, I order clothes and I have them in my house. I wrap them up on my kitchen scale and I take a big rubber band, wrap the rubber band around and put it on the scale. And then what I'll do is um, the clothes that I, I already own, I'll take a Sharpie and I'll write the weight in the collar. And that way, or the, the tags. So in the future, the next time I travel, I'll be able to see how much something weighs. Uh, and then it makes it easy because all you do is you pick through your things and you know what it weighs and you can figure out ahead of time how much weight you're looking for. But it's an easy way to make a decision because if you have a pair of pants that weighs a pound and a pair of pants that weighs six ounces, there's no choice there. You've already made your choice. And shoes are the same way. Shoes are the biggest source of weight other than your clothes. Uh, one other little tip for cutting weight is don't bring any liquid toiletries at all. Uh, just buy shampoo when you get there, for example. Buy conditioner when you get there. Because uh, those things can weigh a pound at least all of those different things. So either uh, toiletries that don't have any liquids or toiletries that you can just buy. Any other questions about that? Yes, ma'am. Do I wash the silk? Do I wash the silk? I do. And maybe I shouldn't. I don't know. They might, they might roll their eyes at me, but yes, I do. These just came out of the washing machine about an hour ago. Yes. So you're not washing when you're on your set. Our silk is washing. Oh, because yeah. mine may not affect most of it. Yeah. So these ones, these silk pants just went through the, the heavy duty cycle on in my washing machine with hot water. And I dried them in the tumble dryer. And you know, the thing is that for me, if they can't tolerate that, they have no business being in my bag. Because when you're in Europe or anywhere in the world and you take your clothes to the wash, who knows what they're going to do? Typically, if you hand your, your laundry over to a laundry place, they're going to wash it on hot and they're going to ruin your clothes. So I would rather wash them on, on hot at home and make sure they can withstand those temperatures and that feeding before I take them abroad. So these have really taken a beating and they look fine. So, yeah, totally washable. The only thing that really isn't washable are some of the sweaters, like the cashmere sweater sheet, it's really delicate with that stuff. But as far as the silk pants go, I don't know if that's what you can wash. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but actually hand, uh, hand washing works too, because uh, I have a couple of silk tops that I brought with me that I do just wash in them. I, like something like this, I would put. I would put this in, in just in the sink. Yes, I would wash this in the sink and then wring it out and then just hang it up to dry. But this is so lightweight, it would dry within seconds probably, especially in humid or hot European climates of you know, these days. Something like this would be ideal because it would dry in the sure. So, yeah, all of these things would be, and that's why I've chosen these certain things because they're all super lightweight. The cotton popcorn is the same thing. I would take this at home and I would wash this on warm and tumble dry it and then iron it. That's how I would maintain it. Because if it shrinks too much or it gets too wrinkled, I don't want it in my bag anyway. But all of these things would work really, really well. So. How often do you tend to wash your clothes while you're traveling? Uh, while I'm traveling, I wash my clothes until I have no underpants left. So that usually is about I usually try to take all of my underpants and draws in and wash them in the shower with me. Uh, so two weeks, I can probably make it two weeks. Sometimes I can make it longer. Uh, my children brought basically three outfits and they lasted more than two weeks without doing laundry, but probably they shouldn't have. <laughs> they were not so fresh at the end of the trip, but that's okay. But for myself, I do every two weeks. That's about right. And you know, the thing is, when you're layering like this, what you can get away with is doing it every two weeks when you have an undershirt like this. When you wear a tank top underneath, then you can launder this, just hand wash this every few days. Uh, and that's part of the strategy of layering, because uh, it keeps the other layers cleaner and fresher, and then you don't need to launder as often. So, it works well. So, Sarah, there's a hat in there that's yeah. Yes. Yeah, this is a hot little hat uh, I got because my hair is short these days, and so. I just got this little hat, which I've been wearing everywhere. 
It's just, it's actually made of paper. I got this off of Amazon. It's just a nice little floppy hat. And it goes with everything. And this is another thing is I love that it goes with everything right here. You know, so just a really simple little hat. It has little ties so that I can winch it down around my neck when I'm on a ski or something like this or an elephant ride or whatever it is. I'm sure. You never know what I'm going to be Yeah. Last, what did I, I, I had my hand on it like this when I was on a speedboat in a fishing potato recently, but I'm shocked I haven't lost it yet. But a good hat is nice. I, I've never been a hat person, but I'm converted now. Putting a really good hat, especially because it also shades your shoulders in the sun, right? So it's, yeah, very useful. Yes, yeah, so this one, I've just, just taken, it's got these little black ribbons, and so I've been storing it like this, just tie it its own ties, and then I can pop it back into my bag. So, I got just a simple little hat. Works really well. And those are really simple. The last thing I wanted to show you is just my day bag, which is a wreck right now because this literally came off the plane yesterday. Um, but uh, in here I keep kind of all the basic things that I need for my trip. But my one thing that I always like to point out is my box of awesome, which everybody should build. This is a little first aid kit from uh, Target, cost 99 cents. And inside I filled it with everything to fix what's wrong. So one of these little ties, tenacious tape, which can fix anything that falls apart, uh, hand cleansing towelettes in case somebody gets hurt, sewing kit. I can fix your teeth if your fillings fall out. This is stuff to fix fillings. This is uh, adhesive to put crowns back in your mouth. Uh, I have little tiny scissors, which are okay. These are fine for an airplane, little tiny scissors. Uh, I have mole skin in here, just in case you have uh, any problem with blisters. I have little wipes for uh, mosquitoes, and band-aids, and other first aid kit kind of things. But you can put whatever you want in here. Um, there's a lot of great ideas out there that people like to keep. Floss, floss is a really useful thing. Uh, this floss can be used not just for teeth, but also for tying things together, safety pins. Uh, so having a little versatile kit like this that can solve little problems, I highly recommend everybody thinking about putting together a little kit like this, because it, it would cost you nothing, and you can go around the house, pick up super glue, for example. Super glue is really helpful to have your bag uh, in case anybody could need it. Uh, other than that, oh, it's just very messy in here, but this is my money belt, which everybody should probably have a money belt that keep my uh, passport and spare credit cards and things like that. Uh, but a good bag is really important. That's a really personal item. Uh, but having a good solid bag with a good strap is something that you need to think about ahead of time. And make sure it works for you because this is the thing you're going to have on your shoulders every day. Um, but I don't have a lot of good suggestions other than this is Tom Bin, and Tom Bin is my favorite bag manufacturer. Uh, this is probably seven or eight years old, and it is still ticking. I don't know how. <laughs> it's with me on the road probably half a year, and it's still ticking along. So invest in a good bag, because this is something that's going to last you a long time. So, yeah. Packing cubes also. I have Tom Big packing cubes, and then these are uh, packing cubes from a place called e, e Bags, I guess it is. And this is a really nice set, too, that's ultra light. The bags themselves don't weigh anything. And I can fit three pairs of shoes into this bag. So that's really nice to compartmentalize. So when you open your bag, everything's in little cubes, and you just pull out the cubes. And then you put them together, and you put them back into the bag. No problem. Really pretty easy. So, any other questions? Well, thank you so much for joining us today, tonight. And thank you, everybody at home, for joining us tonight. We really appreciate it. Uh, and uh, thank you for coming to Eileen Fisher at the University Village. If you're interested in Eileen Fisher products, they are having a deal right now for their system line. They're having a discount. And these are the, the simple pants that I have, the pretty dress. Uh, so you can go to EileenFisher.com, I believe, is their website. Uh, and they have lots of great items there. Uh, and I really do encourage you to look at what they're they have because their clothes last a long time. I have things that I've had for 10 years from Eileen Fisher that still look as good as the day I bought them. So I do encourage you to buy quality. It's going to last you for lots and lots of trips. Uh, it's a really good investment in looking good as you travel and being comfortable. So thank you so much Eileen Fisher, University Village Seattle for inviting me today. And thanks for uh, letting me show up all of your cool gear. So. Yeah. Yeah.